Hello everyone, Lawrence here from Unicorn Reviews with the Silverstone RL07. This review will not be a scripted one, there won't be a lot of b-roll, instead I'm just going to bring the camera in and talk about everything that I like and dislike with this case. So let's get started. So as you can see, this is a full metal case, so this is metal, metal on the top, metal shroud, everything is just steel with this case. Uh, there are air vents on the side here, but the entire front is actually blocked off. And here where you can see the light just sipping through, um, this is just a solid panel of plastic as well. So airflow, all the airflow, every single bit of air that goes into this case has to go through one of these vents on either side. And I will talk more about cooling in just a bit. Obviously, tempered glass side panel, a very interesting system on this one. So it just undoes, you just undo two thumb screws at the top and then it hinges at the bottom. Now I think the purpose was that it would actually hold like this, but it also can fall over. So it's a pretty thick piece of tempered glass and then there is a metal edge on the bottom to get that hinge effect. The inside of the case is very basic. So there is no fan in the top. It also doesn't come with these LED strips, by the way. Um, nothing really to mount SSDs on here. Uh, instead, you just have a rubber grommet there and one underneath for the SATA cables and all that stuff. What I really like is that there are ample um, giant cutouts in the top for all your cable routing over there. Moving down to the basement area, on the basement, you get this massive Silverstone logo. I don't know if I like or dislike that. And there's also this little semi cutout thing. So I guess you put your own logo there. Now, well, I don't like, I mean, there were a lot of cutouts at the top for cables, but in the bottom, there's just one cutout. So that will do your GPU, PCI Express, but also extra LED strips, USB, HD audio, and your front panel connectors all have to go through this single hole, which is right on top of the power supply. In the front, there is room for up to triple 120s or dual 140s. As you can see, the dual 140s don't quite clear the basement area, so that will limit the radiator thickness. This is a 27 millimeter radiator with a 25 millimeter fan and then a six, seven millimeter Silverstone RGB fan grill on there. And you have still about a centimeter left over. But push-pull is definitely not an option with 180 millimeter radiators. You can also see all the front I.O. and the LEDs for the front panel all come up through here and go through this single cutout up here. The bottom is open, as I'll show in a bit, but it will create a lot of cables in the top front of the case. The blue LED comes standard with the white case, but it's not RGB, which is quite weird in 2018 to not have RGB lighting. So you cannot change the color. Also, to remove this front panel, you have to be really careful to not pull out the cable here because there are no connectors up here. If you want to replace the blue LEDs yourself, you have a lot of plastics to work with, a lot of metal tabs to remove, and you can easily break the plastic tabs on here as well. So I would definitely recommend against trying to put your own LEDs in there. What I did was use these RGB LED strips, but because, as you can see again, all of these edges here, to create, I guess, strength into the panel. The airflow gets obstructed a lot, and the same goes for the light. So even if you do put RGB strips in the front panel, the light can't come out. And as you can also see, this is like a solid plastic. So there's no air or light that you can get out from within the case here. So it's, I think, a bit of a design flaw, this panel. Talking about design flaws, here's another one that really upsets me. There are visible rivets, even with the window on there and the front panel on, you can still see the rivets. You can also see where the uh, panels are boxed in, so where the panels were bent and created into a box. And the same goes for the top of the case. So here as well, you can see this unfinished exterior. Also, you can see that there are a lot of cutouts in the front panel, but there are none for the bottom. So this entire bottom, is just hard plastic with no way for air to get through. The only way for your power supply to breathe is through this hole right here. Luckily, unlike the RL06, it actually comes with a way better dust filter, so this one's actually easy to remove and to reinstall, just like so. 
So here is the dust filter for the front panel. As you can see, it's a really good one. Magnets, so it's easy to install and to reinstall. There are also little tabs in the bottom to keep it in place. But the problem is there's no dust filter in the front panel. So you have to remove the entire front panel every time, making sure not to destroy the little cable on there. And then you can remove this dust filter to clean it out. At the rear of the case there is an included 140mm fan, so thumbs up there Silverstone. And the 120 if you choose to mount one with like a radiator for example. It's on slidey thingies so you can position it the way you want to. Get 7 PCIe slots with the weirdest bracket retention system ever. So they are also white slots and the way they are installed from the factory is a little something like this. They're in there like so. So just slide it in there and then this thingy here holds them all in place and there are screws over here and over there. This is a horrible design so I don't know, can you remove it? Yeah, so if you flex it a bit you can just get rid of this thing altogether. Remove all the PCIe brackets so they don't fall into your computer because again this thing doesn't hold them in place very well. And then you can just screw your graphics card to the case. As I already mentioned, the entire top is just a solid panel. The paint really shows in this. It's a very shiny, glossy paint. I really like the paint, actually. Um, and then there's the I.O. So blue LED on the power button. There's no reset button. And then dual USB 3.0, dual USB 2.0, headphones and microphone jacks here in the front top. The side panel on this side is also this gloss white. There is no cutout here for airflow. There is no bulge for cable management. And talking about cable management in this case, it's doable, it's definitely doable, but I have this super cable heavy build here, so you might be surprised with the amount of stuff that's on this side. I am obviously running multiple LED strips, multiple LED uh, fan grills, multiple fans. So there is the Silverstone RGB controller box that I have here, and there's basically nothing here. So I'm not using any of the drive base. These drive bays though are really cool, so there's a tab over here, and if you undo the tab, then this will swing out of the way. So you can easily slide in a drive. And then your connectors are on this side, so I'm not a big fan of those because the connector will then overhang the cutout and make cable management even worse. Now there are plenty of zip tie hooks all around the rear of the motherboard tray. That's Awesome. Um, also more zip tie hoops here on both sides. You can run little velcro straps instead of zip ties But there are also additional zip tie hoops in the front So really if you spend any time doing cable management and you're not running too many cables like I am right here Cable management is definitely doable now What I didn't talk about when I showed the rear of the case is that the power supply is centered instead of offset to the side and this means that there's not a lot of room for stashing cables here so you'll just end up with a bunch, like a massive mess over here. And that's amplified by the fact that you need to run, and I'm going to keep ranting on about this, Molex connectors for the front panel and also a Molex connector for Silverstone's RGB um, breakup box. And this, for, in my case, means running an additional Molex cable just for, you know, the lights in this case. And I'm also running an extra SATA cable to hook up all the drives down here. Now the drive base I'm not a big fan of, they're really loose, so my SSD isn't actually in place properly either, it's just dangling in there and held, it's held in place by the cable clutter. It's better for the hard drive, but these brackets are not a tight enough fit, so they're a bit loose. I'm, if you ship or move your system, I would recommend checking the drives before um, booting it up again. So for a conclusion on the Silverstone RL07, things I like are the paint job, the way you can make the internals look and how, because everything's so reflective, how nice it looks. The side panel, the tempered glass panel mounting mechanism is pretty good as well. And that's about it. Unless you really like the looks, I would go with something else like the P400 from Fantex, which also comes with tempered glass and RGB lights and a fan controller at the exact same price. Now I have been nagging a lot in this video and the reason for that is the thermal results. I compared the RL07 to the RL06 and I was getting 16 degree higher CPU temperatures with the exact same build, exact same settings, 16 degrees Celsius higher because there's just no airflow coming from this front panel. 
And that is why I'm so negative in this video and why I really can't recommend this case to anyone. To conclude, it's built in a really weird way, stuff like the rear PCI bracket. It's just weird not having RGB in this super complicated front panel that obviously takes up a lot of the price of this case, but doesn't really add any functionality. It just chokes your entire system and again, 16 degree higher CPU temperatures just aren't worth it. No matter how much you like the styling of this case, because I do think it looks really good. But with these temperatures, why would you even consider buying it? The RLO6 next to it is less expensive and performs way better. And because it's so much less restrictive, you get the added benefit of having less noise as well. Anyway guys, if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and if you want more frequent updates on these weekly videos, go check out my Instagram and my Twitter linked below in the description. And if you want to support the channel with getting me better equipment to film, especially audio gear is what I need, then there is a Patreon link as well in the description below. But for now, massive thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.